So today I'm in Wigtown uh, to visit Sean Blythe, author of the book A Diary of a Bookseller and owner of the shop, The Bookshop. Let's see what he's got to say. I'm really excited. You must be thrilled with the success of your book. Uh, yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised because uh, I, I didn't have any idea how many copies it was going to sell. Or, um, but my publisher was quite confident, so uh, and I think they're quite happy as well. So if my publisher is happy, then I think it's probably done okay. And just for anyone who hasn't read it, how would you summarise it or describe it to them? Uh, it's a year in the life of a second-hand bookseller in rural Scotland. It's um, a lot of people who criticised it have criticised it because it's boring, but it's a diary. You know, it, everything is repeated in the workplace every day. You know, it's, there are different things, but by necessity, it is slightly repetitive. Mm. Um, but yes, it's, it's one year, twenty fourteen. Well, as a fan of the book, someone who's read it, I have to say that I feel that you convey the occasional mundaneness of your job in a very humorous way. That's very kind of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I do get lots of emails and messages and things from people saying that they, they find it funny. Uh, I, I didn't set out to make it funny. I think it just it's just that the things that you maybe remember when you're doing your diary at the end of each day are probably they probably are the funny things rather than the boring things or the annoying things. So um, yeah, I'm glad it's made you laugh. Yeah, definitely. And uh, as someone who's local, I live in Newton Stewart, I also found it quite nostalgic to read down in London. Yeah, I can imagine that. And again, I've had a few comments, um, messages and letters from people who have Galloway associations, whether it's grandparents or parents or whether they grew up here, um, who enjoyed it for that reason too, that, that kind of, because the the frames of reference are all familiar um, if you grew up here or you know the area so I think that that probably helps people enjoy it who maybe otherwise wouldn't. So Sean I've got a confession I did buy your book on Amazon. <laughs> well at least you didn't buy it on the Kindle or at least I hope you did. No I didn't no I do have a physical copy. Um, no I tried to uh, I asked my publisher when I before I signed the contract if we could make it, make the book not available on Amazon, uh -huh. um, uh, or at least not available for six months to give proper bookshops a bit of an advantage, um, but they said no because they they live in fear of um, breaching the terms of their contract with Amazon, um, and if they Amazon are, are brutal, so if they breached the terms of their contract, any of their contracts, Amazon would just delist all their books yeah so they would lose all amazon sales on everything um and that's or they do something similar to that maybe not de delist them but make it difficult for people to buy them because that's what they did with a publisher called hachette a few years ago a french publisher and they just um they basically turned the screws on hachette so they couldn't um they lost all their amazon sales so i can understand why my publisher <laughs> wouldn't want to breach the terms of the contract, but it's just typical of Amazon. It's that they're just brutal. They don't care. They mm. just want to be the everything shop. Um, and if you're a seller, they treat you really badly. If you're a customer, they're brilliant. But if you're a seller, it's, or an employee, then they're they're not a good company. Are to, you to deal with. aware of? Like what percentage of your books have been sold via Amazon or anything like that? I've no idea. I, I honestly don't know. I would imagine it's probably about 50% because <laughs> that's generally, I think, the, the figure for new books in general is about 50% of them are sold on Amazon and 50% in shops. And so in that sense, you owe them quite a lot then? Uh, I would rather lose the sales and not have anything to do with them. <laughs> Honestly, I just yeah. think they're just so unpleasant an organisation to deal with um, that I would happily be p 
poorer financially but richer in spirit. Mm. And is there any extent to which that comes from a bit of resentment just because like they're they're more successful? Um, I mean this certainly takes sales away from bricks and mortar shops uh, and you know I do dislike them for that but I've also sold books, secondhand books, through them and um, they're greedy you know they take when I was I reckon that they took about if I sold a book mm -hmm. for a tenner they'd take three pounds basically they take between 25 and 30 percent that's all yeah that's a lot of money it's a lot considering you know sometimes you're working with margins that that are tighter than that so you know I, I've sold I've, I remember selling a book I'm, I'm suspended from Amazon now so uh, I can't sell through them but I wouldn't want to anyway um, I sold a book for two pounds on Amazon, and Amazon ended up charging me. I lost money selling a book for two pounds, um, but all the, it keeps sneaking in new charges and fees and things, and the, they're just not nice. So your book is in Wigtown, which is one of the most unique towns in the whole of Scotland, because it's completely dedicated to books, and that must be a dream for you. It's great, yeah. Um, I remember when Wigtown got the Booktown status 20, just over 20 years ago, um, thinking I can't envisage how it's going to work uh, in such a small remote community. Um, but it has done, but and it's largely due to a, you know quite a few people putting in a lot of work to make it work. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a joy to be surrounded by books all day, every day, and uh, bookshops, and also, like, an air, the area is so beautiful that, you know, 15 minutes drive I can be on the river fishing, or up a hill, or swimming on in the river or in the sea, um, you know, those sandy beaches, mountains, everything is about 15 minutes from Wake Town, and, uh, so whatever, if you're interested in the outdoors at all, um, it's a beautiful place. I've always thought Disney was missing a trick by not setting a film here, just <laughs> because like it was, it's it seems so magical. It does, yeah. I remember I had a girlfriend um, a few years ago, and we were driving to Kakaoin, um and there are all those drumlins, um, which are those sort of very rounded hills, N not big hills, but um, they're sort of almost perfectly round. Uh, and the first time she saw it, she just pointed at them and said, it's Teletubby land. <laughs> um, and she was right, it kind of looks a, it, almost like a sort of perfect parody of the countryside. So my last question, and thank you so much for giving me That's your time, pleasure. is that um, the theme of my week is that I've been exploring this rural area and sort of examining realistically what is the future for a place like this as the world becomes more urbanised and capitalistic and do you think that Dumfries and Galloway has a good future? Sorry to end on such a... Yeah I, I really do actually I think um, somebody was telling me some statistic recently that last year footfall in I think it was the historic Scotland properties across this area was up by 40% um, and it was consistent, it was right through the whole region and I could say that probably in the shop it, I, there'd be something similar and I think people are discovering it um, and there's a kind of sort of mixed blessing with that because one of the reasons that people love it so much is because it's so quiet and people say it's like the rest of the UK used to be 50 years ago, you know, there are no parking restrictions, the roads are quiet, um, people are friendly, you know, it's, it's a nice area. But the thing, I think the thing about most of rural Scotland is that, um, you know, it makes up, Scotland makes up a third of the UK landmass, but less than a tenth of the population. Mm. So we have space. Um, and I think even when it, Wigtown is busy, even during the festival, it doesn't look busy, it doesn't feel busy, you don't feel like there's that pressure you, you, that's kind of pressure you get when there are crowds of people everywhere. Um, it's a, it's a very relaxing relaxing place to be. Oh, thank you.